Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, the late, great Gerald Lavert, already missing you. That this love ain't what it used to be, we both grew apart. I've got nothing but love for you, baby. Girl, you know, be my heart. It's gonna be strange. Ladies and gentlemen, the late, great Gerald Levert already missing you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Mr. Gerald Levert for the time being, because we gotta talk about Mr. Terrence Howard. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys know Terrence Howard. Um, Hustle and Flow, The Empire, you guys know Terrence Howard, the individual who, and I believe him, says that he's no longer doing acting, Terrence Howard studying to become one of Jehovah's Witnesses, Terrence Howard, none of that is why we're doing this video, we're doing this video because of the speech he gave at Oxford, full address, and Q&A, Oxford Union. Go ahead, YouTube it. It is on YouTube. I promise you, I promise you, those of you who have a mind and know how to think will understand that this man ain't no fool. He's not your standard actor. I, I know I, some of the stuff he says is going to sound strange because it's not your mindset. You're not accustomed to thinking this way. But he's about to say something right now. Oh, I can completely relate to this young man. Now, he and I would not be able to sit in the same room for too long because the personalities will crash, clash, crash. You know, danger, Will Robinson. However, I have a great deal of respect for this young man, especially after hearing bits and pieces of this speech that he gave at Oxford university let, let me let you guys listen to only but a couple of minutes okay one second y'all hold on for a second so I, i've sat also at lunch basically trying to get round my head around this and also uh, i was very 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 skeptical uh, and i put my hands up and say that and one of the things that you mentioned was sort of about how this applies to i think it was the electric sun model uh, and that's where um, it's it's a, a theory that suggests that the sun is powered from external forces rather than what nuclear is usually power. rather than nuclear fusion, which is the. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear what he just said? Now I've not heard this theory before, but it actually makes sense that the sun is not powered by nuclear fusion. <laughs> we only believe the sun was powered by nuclear fusion reactions because of what science told us. Science told us that it was a fact that they had proof but they actually don't have proof. Lord, what what you talking about? The sun is a nuclear, nuclear, that's why they say it's the power of the sun. Come on now. No, that's not true. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, all of the things science tells us are facts are not facts, they are theories. There is no such thing as gravity. Gravity is the word they use to explain the effects of something, but they cannot explain what gravity actually is. Go ahead. Gravity is still a theory to this day. Relativity is still a theory till this day. It has never been proved to exist. I know, you, you, you thought that gravity existed. No. Well, didn't uh, Sir Isaac Newton have an apple fall on top of his head and thus he discovered gravity? Really? Is that what it, the story was? Ladies and gentlemen, people have been falling from buildings. That's why in ancient times they had to build a precipice around the roof <laughs> to keep people from falling off. So, no, he didn't discover no stupid gravity from no stupid apple falling on no stupid head. 
that would only have made him even more stupid. No, Isaac Newton was a brilliant man because he was doing a whole lot more than what the history books tells us as far as his research. So please understand, Isaac Newton, by the amount of things that that young man did, was a genius, literally. No joke, he was a genius. But the stories they told us was stupidity. The stories you tell little children. Apple falling on a head. Just like we believe that Benjamin Franklin flew a kite with a key attached to it in order to determine what electricity was. What the? Ladies and gentlemen, if Benjamin Franklin had been struck by lightning from a kite being flown in a storm, using the so-called kite as a lightning rod, then we would have been reading about Benjamin Franklin in the obituaries, the stories they tell little children. So I'm going to let Terrence talk to you because I think you're going to see that not only is the theory that the sun is a nuclear fusion reaction, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys don't really understand, I, I keep telling people, they tell us there's no oxygen in space. So if there's no oxygen in space, then how can the sun exist if there's no oxygen? Because without oxygen, you can't have fire. No, 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 hold on. We live in this universe, not in a parallel universe. Stupid mother. If there was no oxygen in space, there would be no existence for the sun. So why did they tell us that there's no oxygen in space? Because those are the stories you tell children. Hold on, please. General consensus among scientists um, and the reason for that is because there's not a production of, of uh, there's no evidence to suggest that the byproduct neutral, uh, neutrinos um, are, are, are there. And the what, need, are... what, what, what Terence is, is trying to prove, I think, is that because, that because the fact that you can't detect whether the neutrinos are there or not, um, there must be another, another way in which, which they're powered. My Hold on. Hold on, everyone. For there to be nuclear fusion, there must be an element known as neutrinos. Without neutrinos, the nuclear fusion process cannot take place. Pay attention. In our universe, in the physics of our known universe, in some parallel dimension, some parallel universe, some multi-parallel blah, blah, blah theory, yes, it could probably exist without that. But in our realm of existence, it is an impossibility. So the sun cannot be a nuclear fusion reactor. Oh, well, they don't really know if it's neutrinos or not because they haven't been able to do 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 da ba ba whatever. Then that means that it's a theory. That means that it's not a fact because science is experiment upon experiment upon experiment well they can't experiment so that means it's a scientific theory not a scientific fact excuse me that's the issue excuse me one second while we talk about the sun receiving its power from an external source now look it doesn't mean that there's a an extension cord <laughs> attached to the sun but wait till you hear about the movement of the earth away from the sun this is going to dispel another theory that we've all believed we all believe that if we were one inch closer to the sun we would burn up and if we were one inch further from the sun we would burn up wait till you hear this argument to him is that for to suggest that neutrinos don't exist because we have a lot of evidence to, to not know that they're physically there but a lot of the effects and how they interplay with other things mm -hmm. to suggest that they don't exist is is um, to, is not only to, to get rid of that small theory but also quite a lot of other huge uh, laws of, of physics are that, they laws or are they ideas of physics well why don't, okay why don't you respond to that and talk about how a lot of people have that sort of narrow mindset you talked yeah, about identity yeah the, the identity element the, the things that make our math works like if i said to you what's one times one what'd you say one it equals one
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now he's about to do math. And for some of you, you're not going to get this right away. You're going to think you're getting it, but you're not going to get it. But he's going to get into banking and the math that the banks do, and then you're really going to get it. So let me just cut to the chase so that you guys will understand a little bit better. One times one has never equaled one. That's a rule, not a law of mathematics. One times one well you can't bring one into itself no you're not multiplying one into itself but if i multiply me by me that means there are two of me not one take a look if you take two of me let me let me do this for you i'm gonna take a dollar bill which has its own serial number and i'm gonna multiply it by another dollar bill with the same serial number I have two of the same dollar bills, not the same dollar bill. I just created two, not one. One times one has never equaled one. That is a rule, not a law of mathematics. Just like a person says, well, what's one plus two? One plus two equals four, not three. What are you talking about? One plus two equals three. Really? Well, you have the, we're do, dealing with integers here. One is an integer. You have one. Then you have the plus symbol. That's, that's two items. And then you have the number two, which equals two items. One plus two equals four. Again, there are rules and there are laws. The same as with the courts. There are rules and there are laws. But some of you will get this eventually, and some of you will never get this because this is too far over your head because you'll think it's nonsense. Why would you think it's nonsense? Because you have been taught a certain way and your mind cannot allow you to see it any differently. How dare he sit up here and say one plus two equals four? What, you think two plus two equals four? No, two plus two equals five. When you're dealing with the law, when you're dealing with the rule, two plus two equals four. When you're dealing with the rule, one plus two equals three. There's a difference between a rule and a law. That's why I keep telling you, the courts don't get to set the law. They don't get to rule over anyone. You need to understand the difference between a rule and a law. He's about to explain to you the rule, then he's gonna tell you what the law is. One second. Now, what, what would Newton say is that? Action times an action. That's a reaction, right? Anybody in here that thinks one times one equals one, then you give me two pounds and I'll give you a pound back. Did you understand that? He says, if you think one times one equals one, he says, he's talking British pound, give me two dollars and I'll give you one back. If you think one times one equals one, give me two dollars and I'll give you a dollar back. Nobody would do that. That doesn't make any sense because that's not an even exchange. Do, do you guys understand that? That's what he's saying. That's why one times one, the law of mathematics doesn't equal the rule. We do our math wrong. We've been doing our math wrong, but he's about to explain this. I've been saying it for years, so that's why I said same page. And we'll call script. it even, right? Because one times one equals one. Sorry, I had my microphone on. <laughs> that, that, the mute button turned on. So y'all didn't hear me. So let me go ahead and say it again. Hold on, Terrence. We'll get to you in a second. Uh, that, that image of him right there. I'd rather, yeah, he looks better that way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what he was saying was, Speaking of the British pound, he says, if you believe one times one equals one, he says, you give me $2 and I'll give you $1 back. Nobody would ever do that. Nobody. Nobody would ever do that. Nobody would ever make that exchange. Why? Because it's not even. It's not an even exchange. So one times one could never equal one unless it's a rule and not a law. That's why he's saying, you give me $2 or two pounds, and I'll give you $1 back if you think one times one equals one. One second. That's a reaction, right? 
anybody in here that thinks one times one equals one, then you give me two pounds and I'll give you a pound back. And we'll call that even, right? Because one times one equals one. An uh, unbalanced equation. What we need to do is, the first thing in math is you're supposed to have a balanced equation. One times one equals... Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. This is the law, not the rule. The equation always must balance. That's why when they use the accrual method, the account, teen, must always balance or zero out. Ladies and gentlemen, in math, the equation must always be balanced. You cannot have an unbalanced equation. You cannot have an unbalanced equation. These are laws. These are not rules. So he's now explaining, and he's not, uh, he does not use the word rule and law, but he's explaining to you the rule, the difference between the rule, the difference between the law. Like I said, we don't have too much more of this, but hold on a second. Only one is an unbalanced equation. But the identity element, which is like the Jim Crow laws of the 60s, they say that anything multiplied by one becomes that same number as itself. Well, the laws of physics has to break down in order for that to take place. Action and reaction for one times one to equal one. In comparison to if I said, um, what's a dollar times a dollar? Anybody know it's a dollar? Well, what's, what's, what's a dime times a dime or 10 pence? 10 pence, yeah. 10 pence times 10 pence? That's, that's a pound, right? 10 pence times 10 pence? Is that right, honey? <laughs> what about 100 pence times 100 pence? That's a dollar times, a pound times a pound, right? That's a hundred dollars, ain't it? What about a quarter? What about four quarters times four quarters? That's a dollar, right? That's a pound, right? Well, that's four dollars. Now, all of these things are legal. The banks can say a dollar times a dollar is a dollar and give you that. Or the banks can say to a friend, a dollar times a dollar is a quarter times a quarter. It's four quarters times four quarters and give that person four dollars. Before he goes on, before he goes on, I want you to understand there is no money. Before he goes on, I want you to understand there is no money, and that's exactly what he's saying. See, the banks can do this because there is no money. There is nothing of substance or value, so they can create the value. They can create the substance. He's about to mention that. So the banks can say, oh, no, well, here's the accounting, and so you only get $350. And then while John, over across the street, same neighborhood, same accounting, same accountant, same bank, gets $3,500 for your $350. Because his accounting was done differently than yours. Because his math was different. The calculator was different. Because the banks can do that. That's how we keep disproportionality in our society. That's why individuals are poor and other individuals are rich. It's not because people work for a living, it has nothing to do with work. And one day people are gonna understand that. It has nothing to do with laziness or going to work or not going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, I took my knowledge and I created companies based on my knowledge. That's it. No product, just knowledge. So it has nothing to do with going to work it has everything to do with creating something that people don't have access to and giving them access to it. So let's let Terrence finish. Say to another person, a dollar times a dollar is um, 100 pence times 100 pence. That person gets $100. So that money is generated. And this is all legal. Do you think it's not happening in the banks? This is what one times one equaling one has got us. This inconsistency of our monies and our economy is sitting in the balance. And the rest of our future is sitting in the balance because our science has been stunted as a result of the problems in mathematics. Because math asks for the basic laws of physics to break down in order for one times one to equal one. In order for one times zero to equal nothing, laws of conservation of energy has to disappear. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear what he just said? 
in order for one times zero to equal nothing, the laws would have to disappear. The laws of mathematics would have to disappear. The laws of physics would have to disappear. They are literally creating rules and not following the law. The same thing about the courts. They create rules and they don't follow the law. Now, he's not saying this. I'm just pointing this out based upon the information that he's giving. This is our world. This is what I see every single day. But the rest of you can't see this. Or you see it from a distance and you can't quite make out what it is. He's explaining what it is. One more second. Math is the foundating laws of math is support the, supposed to support the laws of I did it again. Oh, God. I have this mute button on my microphone. That's so I don't interfere with him talking. And I forgot to turn the mute button off, ladies and gentlemen. And if I did turn it off and forgot and I turned it off, I apologize for repeating this, but I'm going to say it again nonetheless. He spoke about the law of physics, the law of equations. If zero times one, equals zero, then the entire mathematic system breaks down because that's an impossibility. You cannot take one times zero and equal zero because you still have something of substance. Even if zero is said to be something of non-substance, which is an impossibility because zero has to represent something. It cannot represent nothing. There is no such thing as nothing. Pay attention. There is no such thing as nothing because even when you have nothing, you have something. Nothing from nothing leaves something. Not nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You cannot ever have nothing in mathematics. There has to be something always there to represent which is what I try to help people understand when doing math, that if you have a number, let's say we have the number, you see the clock right there? You see how those two zeros are in front? Well, those two zeros go on to the left for infinity. For infinity, infinity, and turn infinity. And after that, the last set of numbers there, they're zeros that go on for infinity. There has to be something representative of the number there. Okay, there has to be something representative of nothing. That's why they give us zero. Zero does not exist in nature, people. Hold on. Y'all didn't understand that? Let me say it again. Zero does not exist in nature. Go ahead. Find a zero in nature. I dare you, but you can find a one. You can find a nine, you can find a one plus another integer, i.e. 10, one plus zero. You can find those two numbers combined in nature, but you can never find a zero, nothing. You can even find a negative in nature, but you can never find a zero. Zero does not exist. It never has. Zero is a rule. Go ahead. Zero is a rule. Somebody created math. They created mathematical standards. Zero is a rule. That's why the rule is all of these zeros right here continue for infinity all the way over here, all the way off the screen. And back here on the other end, zeros all the way to infinity and beyond. Zero does not exist in nature. It's just a rule. Shh, don't tell nobody because you'll sound crazy. There are rules and there are laws. Terence finished telling us. The physics, they are arm in arm. They cannot be in controversy with each other. So we need an audit on the platonic solids. We need an audit on the square root of two. And we need an audit on action and reaction. Or we either got to get rid of, we say one times one equals one, and there's no action and reaction. One or the other. You can't have both. And until we make that change, we're in trouble. We're going to be stunted as a as a species right should we open up to questions from no, the audience? <laughs> good good so 
tell them no. We ain't opening up to no questions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't listened to the rest of this, but I, I will tell you this. I agree wholeheartedly. I didn't even listen to that part, y'all. I just stopped it and said, no, I got to play this so that everybody else could hear this. See, we keep thinking that the scientists and the professors and everybody are the geniuses. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why they go to those stupid schools. They call them higher learning and higher education, but they're not higher anything. They are getting high, but they are not higher anything. Look, you've heard the phrase, stupid is, stupid does. Well, when you're going to these so-called universities of stupid education, you are being taught and trained the same lies, 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 perpetually, constantly, over and over and over and over and over again. That's why I quit college. I, I quit. I even tried to go back and I just, no, I can't handle this. You know, I, I went to another school and myself and the teacher were constantly going at each other because I'm like, you're lying. That's not true. That's impossible. And he was going by the rule and I was going by the law. Of course, I had to leave that particular school. Why? Because I can't have you trying to teach me something that's stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't allow my teachers in high school to do it either. I was always checking them. I've told you guys the stories about how my teacher wanted to talk about a particular subject. And I said, well, why can't we talk about both sides of the argument? And he allowed me to present proof of what I was saying. Now, he couldn't present proof of what he was saying, which is why for the rest of that semester, I took over the class. I'm not joking, people. When I tell you that in the fourth grade, my fourth grade teacher had me helping to be a teacher's aide. Well, and this was when I'm talking right now. This was junior high school. No, no, this was high school. Sorry, this was the 10th grade. That's why I'm thinking junior high school because it was so close to the 9th grade. Anyway, in the 10th grade, I got to teach the class. And science. Well, science was one of my favorites. And I got to teach the class for half a semester. I understand, Mr. Howard. I understand his mindset. I get it. He's talking about frequencies for the most part, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking about the flower of life. Now, if you guys don't understand the flower of life, let's do that. I'm going to step off Terrence for a second because I want to send you guys on some research. T Wait, it's already there. It's listening to me, y'all. I, I, I just put the, and it got it right up there at the top. Look at, did y'all see that? I, man. Sorry. It's listening to you guys when you are talking okay now you see this idiot talking about the spirit of science then i won't look at that because he's going in a different direction um i think this is a short video okay i think this is a short video but i can't tell because it ain't giving me the numbers but i'm gonna click because like i said the flower life let's Let's watch The Flower Life, ladies and gentlemen, I because I think it's important that some of you have this information. Because it all, all of this delves into everything we've been talking Terrence about. Terrence Howard I've been is talking about, about to lift the veil on a 6,000-year-old secret, one that mankind has been trying to decipher for thousands of years. What we're about to uncover is not just surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm only going to let that play. The fact that he is piggybacking on what Terrence has said. He's not going to offer anything new. He's going to offer theories. And I, I know the type of video this is. I know the type of video this is. I get it. Fine. Blah, 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 blah. I'm more focused on the, the flower of life. This thing that you see in symbols all around everyone, everywhere. Okay. The flower of life comes from the symbol of the tree of life. That's why it's called the flower of life. Pay attention. Pay attention to the words. The flower of life. Coined a phrase, but it actually comes from the tree of life. One second. It's transformative. 
So sit tight and let's dive in. I want you guys to. Now hold on now. The same speech as you know this. I just didn't play this part because it's at the beginning. I want, I want y'all to hold on now. I'm not sitting up here advocating the flower of life because some of it has some mystic traditions associated with it. And I don't play that. However, I do want you to pay attention to the principles surrounding what he's about to say. One second. To know about a 6,000 year old secret. 6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Have you guys ever seen this before? Now you know this is one of Now hold on now. Do you see the photo that's being shown in your background? Terrence Howard didn't show this. This is the individual doing the video showing this. Okay, let's make sure you understand that. Terrence Howard, if you look at the speech, he doesn't have any videos because he the projector, he wasn't prepared for the projector. They weren't prepared to show the projector. So that's why I have to chime in and say this is not what he's showing the audience, okay? All right, one second. One of the oldest symbols in um, human history, right? This symbol was found in the Temple of Osiris in Egypt, and it had been molecularly burned into the wall. And it's 6,000 years old. This, this same symbol has been found in the... You see, it's just the symbol, ladies and gentlemen, but like he says, it's found everywhere. And if you look at the symbol, it continues. It, it doesn't stop. It continues and continues and continues. See, this flower comes from that one. This flower comes from that one. It continues. It doesn't stop. So, again, the flower of life. I get it. Hold on. The forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs, and the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. There were secrets in that flower of life that da Vinci spent his whole life trying to uncover. There were secrets in that flower of life that Newton spent his whole life in secret trying to uncover. The same secrets that Pythagoras was desperately trying to uncover. But the problem was they kept seeing this in a two-dimensional space. They couldn't get it out of this two-dimensional Ladies and gentlemen, that's the problem with most people in their thinking. Most people's thinking is linear, straight lines. That's what he's talking about. You heard people say, think outside the box. Well, technically, that's what they're trying to say. Is stop thinking along a straight line. Start looking at things from a different angle. See, we're always looking at things at angles as opposed to understanding that there's no such thing as a straight line. Go ahead. I dare you to point out a straight line. There is no such thing as a straight line because every line has curves in it. Every line has curves in it. Go ahead. When you break it down, take a line, draw a line on a piece of paper, put it in your computer, and blow it up as large as you can, and you'll see that there are curves in that line. There's no such thing as a straight line. The shortest distance between two points is not a straight line. Pay attention. That's just the same. Shortest distance between two points, when you recognize there's a curvature, pay attention. Okay? So, that's what he's saying. One second. Uh-oh, apologize for that. Let's do that again frame and as a result they got stuck in this plane a flat plane now what da Vinci and all of them wanted to do they were trying to find a way to bring this flower to life because what is inside of it well apparently there were secrets inside of it shapes they got the macurba and all of those other things out of it but they were misled by something I think called a straight line you guys believe in straight lines you believe there's straight <coughs> lines in the universe well, let me hit you with something. All energy in the universe is expressed in what? It's in motion. Waves. If something is still, there's no energy. Kinetic, right? All motion is expressed in what? You look at galaxies. Are they expressed in straight lines? Curves. Expressed in vortices. All vortices are expressed in what? Curves. Waves. All waves are curved. Show me a straight line in nature. You show me where the platonic solids come from. Where do they have their... Hold on now. Y'all just heard me say the same thing. 
wasn't saying it based upon what he's saying. I'm saying it based upon the facts. There's no such thing as a straight line. There never was a straight line. When you teach you to draw a straight line, do you notice how difficult it is for you to draw a straight line without a ruler? You know how you cannot draw a straight line to save your life? Even if you tried, it would still be a curve? Ladies and gentlemen, haven't you noticed, even in vehicles, we have to keep our eye on the road because we cannot travel in a straight path? We tend to veer. We tend to curve. Because there are no straight lines in nature. Shh! Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Foundations in our universe. Are there any straight lines? If you look at anything, there are no straight lines. That's been the mistake. We've been looking at these straight lines, this Euclidean way of thinking and missing the curvature of nature. So here we are. There's curves all over nature. All over nature. It's not straight lines. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the linear thinking of people. People think linear, straight line, year to year, day to day. And I keep telling people, don't worry about tomorrow. If you focus on today, just getting to 12 o'clock midnight, then tomorrow never comes. You never have to worry about tomorrow if you only focus on today. But those of you who are worried about tomorrow and next month and next week and what's going to happen at the end of the month or you're going to pay your bills, you are stuck in a mindset for where you're trapped. You are stuck in the mindset of, oh my God, what am I going to do? As opposed to, yeah, I'll deal with that when the time comes. No, I'm going to take care of this because this is more important. See, when you take care of the most important things, all that other junk that you, you're worried about all at the same time because you procrastinated, all happening at the same time, if you take care of the most important thing day by day by day by day by day, bam, life is a whole lot easier. Hold on. Back with the curvature of nature. And you have all these little pieces. Now, this has always been an information system. So comp compare some of these points, take a point here, and say, well, what's the space in between all of these things? Now, they've said that all the in-between spaces, if this is the Earth and this is the moon right here, all this in-between space is filled with what? A void. There's nothing in the void. Well, I found that there is something in the void. The elementary fundamental particles that they've been searching for at the CERN Collider, the Hedron Collider and CERN, I found that their energy signatures matched perfectly to some of the pieces that I was able to pull out of here. Terence Howard's captivating speech on the flower of life not only draws us into a world of ancient mysteries, but also encourages a profound reevaluation of geometric understanding. His assertion... Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop because I don't care to hear this individual's take on anything. Why? Because he's going to deal with all of that junk that the individuals who did not have a handle on anything dealt with. What am I trying to say? Going back 100 years, yeah, fine, we can go to somebody else's research, but that was 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, where the mindset wasn't there, where we didn't have the technology, technological advances that we have today. Yes, some of the technological advances are jokes. I get it. I understand it. But I would prefer, rather, that we stuck to the reality. Now, what's the reality? That there is no reality. That we created the reality. Hi, what time is that? God, that we need this? Oh, God, no. I am not trying to say that at all. I'm saying just the opposite. I'm saying that he created the so-called flower of life. Jesus called it something different. We coined it as the flower of life. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we are stealing his ideas and trying to understand it as if we are capable of doing so. That's what I'm saying. See, when you guys get a chance to listen to the speech of Terrence, you're going to see that he talks about the sun, as we got into a little bit, not being a nuclear fusion reactor. Now, he goes into detail about that. Okay, I agree that we only believe the sun is a nuclear fusion because I told people, I looked at the sun. I looked at the sun through 
a telescope, my own personal telescope. And when I looked at the sun through that telescope, I tell you, I realized firsthand that the sun is not a ball like everybody says. It's not round like everybody says. But it is a huge fire ball that I can confirm because I saw it with my own eyes. Or I, one at a time, okay? Now, I'm going to do this because there are going to be some of those who are flat earthers here. Got to talk about y'all for a second. And I'm not talking about y'all. I'm not going to put you down. But I'm going to give you some reality. Um, Terrence Howard in that speech talks about how this, the earth is moving away from the sun. Give me a second while I find that and I'll be right back. I may not or may have found it, but either way, this is important. So I'm going to play it, all right? So y'all bear with me because this is my commentary. Sometime a long way, or maybe at 13 or 14, we let go of the little person that kept us going. That little person that was always there, I got you, man. I'm here. I got you. Don't know. You don't go in there. I ain't going in there. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that that voice that he's talking about, that person, is ever present in my life. No joke. Honestly. I thought I was the only one. Literally. I am not joking. I literally have to listen to myself, tell myself, I got you. Did I tell you I would not let you fall? I find myself saying that out loud because I promised myself that I would never let myself fall. That I would be there for me. Because you can't depend on nobody else. I was just talking to my friend, I, this gentleman I call a friend. And he was telling me something personal because he's been going through some things. And we hadn't been talking because what he's been going through is very personal for him. And he hadn't reached out to me. And I, I told him, I said, what is wrong with you? How come you didn't call me to tell me about this? And he apologized, he says, but he needed to work some things out. And I said, no, not like that. You know better. You know, we talk about everything. And he apologized, and he's been opening up about everything as of late, including some negative thoughts that he's had. And I just wrote him back today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to share with you what I wrote. Not what he wrote me, but what I wrote him. Give me a second. Got to click on the name. <laughs> Uh, give me a second. I need to go back and read it. Uh, this is what I told him. I said, you need to understand, sir, that I am more jealous of you than you could possibly know. That I really do believe you need to see yourself for who you are, because I don't believe you realize all of your potential. I saw it, I knew it from the first time I saw you. I didn't see physical, I saw the mental you. Never forget your essence. And if I can see that, imagine what Jehovah can see. Ladies and gentlemen, when I first met this young man, I saw somebody who had the capabilities of being great. And he is. I just think he's violent. <laughs> no, I don't think he's really violent. He just, he does martial arts and he's into the MMAs and I don't like violence. And the martial arts, the mixed martial arts, that is a very violent sport. And I'm not into that. So, but other than that, he is a very unique person. What am I trying to say here? He's speaking about 
when we were younger. We used to not speak to ourselves, but we used to warn ourselves, no, man, don't do that. We used to say things like that out loud. And we stopped doing that. Why? You've seen the, the Flintstones with Mr. Gazoo and these other creatures that would pop up on Fred's shoulder and, and warn him about doing something and the other one would pop up on the other shoulder telling him we would think that that was two different natures. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a play on what we were doing with ourselves when we were growing up. How we would warn ourselves, how we would say, no, nah, man, you know better than that. You need to get away from these people. These people are not your friends. And we stopped listening to that voice. Well, guess what? I listen to that voice now. Have been for years. Like I said, I made a promise to myself. So again, I get the man. One second. That person, when we get about 13 or 14, we get embarrassed of him. And we push him aside and we don't listen to him anymore. And he's always knocking. Hey, hey. And after so long of a time, maybe 10, 15 years, you don't even know him. You show up at your own door and you don't even know who you are. Your family doesn't know who you are. So it's important no matter what you do, no matter what challenges you go through, you remember who you are. I told everybody, at the age of 26, I stood in front of that mirror and I found 10 things about myself that I liked, not loved, liked did not walk away from that mirror because I thought it was too hard. I sat up there for two, uh, two and a half hours, ladies and gentlemen, two and a half hours. Would not allow myself to walk away from that mirror until I found 10 things that I liked. Now I can run off 10 things in a matter of 15 seconds. Okay, it, it does, it's not that difficult now, but then it was very hard because I didn't see myself. So I don't want to see myself the way you see me. I could care less how you see me. I wanted to see myself for who I am. I wanted to see myself for myself. Now listen to what I just said. I wanted to see myself for myself. That means two persons. I wanted to see myself for myself. That's two persons. Pay attention to what I said at the very beginning of this conversation. See, I can bring, pay attention, my consciousness with me because my consciousness my mind it's not the same as my body my physical person i'm talking about no spiritual anything i'm talking about reality my mind is not my physical person never was the physical person only houses the thing that stores the essence i.e my ability to think not everybody has the ability to think. Most people are just robots. Why do you think Israel is doing what it's doing? Because it considers most people to be just simple robots. They're not real. And guess what happens when someone who's not real meets someone who's real? You see it in movies all the time. They try to destroy it. And then the people who are real, who find someone who else who is real, who doesn't agree with them, they try to get the robots to destroy them. Don't you see that's what all the AI movies are all about? Go ahead and look at I Am Legend. Do they not destroy the one person who is around them, who is not like them, who is not a robot or a so-called zombie-like creature? This is our society. This is nature. Okay, one second. You may think you've been here for 20 years on this planet, but we know that energy, it is forever. It doesn't die. It continually recycles itself. So you know that you've been a trilobite 350 million years ago, or some part of it. Some parts of you were part of a, a pterodactyl. Every one of us have been a part of everything in this universe. So if we tap in... Hold on now. This is where I part ways from him. Because we are energy. Our brain waves, our energy. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. Energy is in everything. Even a rock has energy. Energy is omnipresent. Energy is God, but God is energy with intelligence. So energy is everywhere. That's that's fine. I got that. Energy equals oneness. Eon. I get it. I told you. I understand. However, 
it is not us, but the energy in us that's been around for quadzillions of quadzillions of years to the quadzillionth power. Just as simple. You can't go back far enough. You would have to multiply it by several quadzillions to the several quadzillionth power to go all the way back to the beginning. And it'll be impossible. You can't even think like that because you think linearly. Where did God come from? You think linearly, like he had to come from someplace. You think linearly because you came from someplace, not realizing that the energy that put you and brought you together and that exists in you has been around for quadzillions of years. Let that stew for a moment. One second to those things in ourselves and remember those things in ourselves we have that power now my vocation has been an actor and i've loved that i've been able to take care of my family as an actor but that's never been my passion i was an actor because it was like jesus walking on water for tips because he could do it that's what he did it was a natural thing for him i've always been an empath i've always been emotionally connected to everything but the thing that I was most spiritually connected to, that was my driving force, was physics. It was wondering how the universe really came to be. And I fell in love with this thing called the flower of life. You guys know da Vinci? Do you know what he spent most of his life trying to figure out? Who in here knows the flower of life? Couple? Now these are college students, ladies and gentlemen. These are college students, okay? And only a few people know about the flower of life. You guys have been hearing, you've heard of the circle of life. Well, pay attention. You have heard of the flower of life then. It's the circle of life. Okay? Remember, circle of life. Everything moves, not linearly but in curves and waves. It's the circle of life and the flower of life. Ladies and gentlemen, when you understand what they're referring to as the secrets of the flower of life, you might understand the flower of life because the flower of life is simple. You don't believe me? Hold on. I'm going to end it with this because some of y'all just, I don't know, he tried to tell y'all, but y'all didn't pay attention to him. Literally, he tried to tell you, but you didn't pay attention to him. Shame on y'all. One second. I want y'all to pay attention, because you'll get it in a second. Jehovah God then said, let the man, or excuse me, here the man has become like one of us in knowing good and bad. Now, in order that he may not put his hand out and take the fruit also from the tree of life, and eat and live forever. With that, Jehovah expelled him from the Garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he had been taken. So he drove the man out and he posted at the east of the Garden of Eden the cherubs and the flaming blade of a sword that was turning continuously to guard the way to the tree of life. Now, what, do, what does this have to do with the flower of life? First of all, what you all need to understand with this tree of life, with this flower of life, this knowledge. Remember, it was the knowledge of good and bad. Pay attention, knowing good and bad, knowledge of good and bad, the tree of knowledge of good and bad. Well, the tree didn't contain any knowledge, people. It's what it represented. The tree had no knowledge. Remember, they could eat from that tree and look at how much they ate. And did they gain any wisdom? No, the tree had no knowledge. It just was the knowledge of good and bad because they did something bad. And they now knew the difference between good and bad. Now they had knowledge of good and bad because they did something bad. They now had knowledge of good and bad. So the tree represented something. The tree of life also represented something. It symbolized something. They would have had this knowledge plus this knowledge. That would not have been a good thing. Because this was a promise. If they ate from this tree, 
they would have lived forever. Why didn't they eat from the tree from the very beginning? Because there was no need. There was no in there was no inference in which they were to die. This was the only way that they would die is if they ate from that tree. Now hold on, we ain't finished now. I just wanted to show y'all that. Okay, that this was this is why Da Vinci and all of them can't grab hold of the knowledge because it's hidden from them. And that's why they keep talking about it being hidden knowledge. So we can go to the fifth chapter of John, final one. And we're going to go to verse 26 again. We done talked about this before. Pay attention. For just as the Father has life in himself, of course he possesses the flower of life. So he has granted also to the Son to have that knowledge and the ability to impart it in himself to others. That's why he says, do not be amazed at this for the hour is coming which all of those who are in the grave will hear his voice and come out. Those who did good things to a resurrection of life where they'll get to eventually have that knowledge and those who practice vile things to a resurrection of judgment. If you don't believe me, go back and read it. What do you think he was talking about all that time? You think he was just talking about himself? Of course not. Go back and read. This flower of life thing, coming from the tree of life, is nothing new. Everybody has been looking for the elixir. Everybody has been looking for the fountain of youth. Now, when he talked about waves, uh, because everything moves in waves, then of course radio waves, sound waves, would have an effect on human health. Of course that would be the case. Does it cure everything? No, because if it did, then nobody would die. Pay attention. If sound waves, radio waves cured everything, if natu eating natural foods cured everything, then nobody would die. People have been dying from the beginning, from when they ate from that tree, because that was the punishment. If everything was cured by nature, then God would be a liar. Okay? Told him in the sweat of your face, you will eat bread all the days of your life. And the ground will grow nothing, grow nothing but thorns and thistles. Well, the ground grows thorns and thistles. I can prove that. I can validate that. And I eat bread in a sweat of my face. I talk, cultivate the ground. So, again, the flower of life has some basis in reality. But I assure you, when you start to understand the difference between reality, the difference between the rules of reality, and the difference between the laws of reality, then you'll start to understand this thing we call life. At least that's my hope. Now, I don't know, because some of y'all are hard-headed. Some of y'all don't have no sense to save your own life or the lives of those you love. And so with that being said, we're going to let y'all go. And I do want to thank y'all. You shouldn't be leaving your clothes on the floor. I'm going to miss your face. Yes, I am, baby. I'm going to miss your face. Hey, I'm going to miss making. Gotta go. Y'all take care of yourselves because even though you haven't gone yet, I'm already missing you. Yeah. Yeah.